Hey, everybody. Welcome to Sunday Morning uh, Spiritual Discoveries. And uh, we're so looking forward to uh, sharing this topic with you today. We, we think it's not only important, we think it's very, very, very important. And uh, there's a reason for this. And uh, the topic today is unconditional love. What is and, it? What is it not? Yeah, what is it and what is it not? And it's so important that we discuss this. There's a lot of confusion about unconditional love, you know, that the Christian point of view is if someone slaps you on the side of the cheek, turn and slap them on the other side of the cheek, you know, yeah. and there's a lot of, I would say there's a lot of suffering if you don't have the right perspective of unconditional love. And what we want to share today is the multifacetedness of unconditional love, not just unconditional love, slap me, slap me, slap me, slap me, lay down, step on me, kick me. There's another aspect of love that includes you and includes me. And I know that's hard in a lot of communities and a lot of people that just read the Bible say we're supposed to be just this elevated, you know, unconditionally loving all the time. And, and, but it's more complex than that. It's deeper than that. There's more to it than that. And, and that's what we want to talk about today, because if we don't have the right perspective of love, then we're going to find out that people will actually use that Bible scripture and that Bible terminology against us, meaning you're not loving, you're not this. You know, years ago, I, I, I had a friend who was a spiritual guy, and he spent a lot of time a lot of time telling me that he wouldn't let anybody live in his house. You know, he was like, my house is my, this, my house is where I go to get out of the world. My house is this. And, but I got the feeling that no matter what happened to me, no matter what happened, if something s severely happened to me in life, he was telling me that his house would not be open to me. And I, and I used to think, you know, man, that guy's a prick. How could that guy be a Christian? How, why is he telling me that? Why is he telling me my house is off limits to me? And I was just like so disturbed by it because I had the one facet of, of unconditional love that no matter what, you know, we help our brother, no matter what, we, we, we let the thief in, we let the whoever in, we, you know, and it's totally, totally not correct. It's not wholeness. And that's what we wanted to talk today about unconditional love. What is wholeness regarding unconditional love? I think we should call it, what is wholeness? You know, because love is kind of twisted. Love is kind of one-sided. We think of love as just lovingness, lovingness, you know, just kind of going through life like that. But the truth is, lovingness is a lot more than just turning the other cheek and, you know, um, and, and allowing someone to abuse us. You, you know, like it'd be like a woman in a house, right? And the man, you know, decides one day he's just going to smack her upside the head, right? And she just goes like this. Well, if you just had the scriptural point of view, you'd say, well, I'm married and, you know, I'm supposed to be married forever. And he obviously didn't mean that, you know, uh, maybe tomorrow I'll just, when he goes to swing, I'll go like this and let him hit me on this side of the tree. And then the next day, maybe this side of the tree. And, and you say to yourself, <laughs> there's something wrong with that yeah. perspective, right? There's something wrong with that. What's wrong with that? But honestly, guys, this is the perspective that Christianity, a lot of Christianity, even spiritual, especially spiritual communities, love is this high ideal. Love doesn't even notice when they do it wrong. How about you're going to notice when they do it wrong? How about when somebody slugs you in the face for no reason? Are you going to hardly notice that they did it wrong? Are you going to just, you know, say love endures all things and hopes all things and believes all things and, you know, love never fails? Or is there another element to love? Because there's a there's a scripture in the Bible that says we must love them as we love ourselves. So when it comes to toxic relationships, and that's probably what we're going to talk a little about, about today is toxic relationships. What happens when you're in toxic relationships? Love takes on another flavor. And that's what we want to talk about today. What is the other flavor love takes on when you're in a toxic relationship, when you're in an abusive relationship, maybe with your family? Maybe your family is very toxic, very manipulative, very covert, very nasty. 
to you. Uh, gaslighting, you, you know, they, they're using all these tools, you know, <clears throat> you know, they're accusing you of not being loving or whatever, but there's tools that you can use and that you need to know. And I think a, a more expanded version of love is going to make your life more amazing because <clears throat> a lot of times when we don't express love the way other people want us to express it, which is sometimes eat a lot of shit, when we don't respond that way, they accuse us. They say, you are unloving. You are unlovable. You've got a spirit. You know, oh, my <laughs> God, you, 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 you've never said that to me before. You know, we told them, do it yourself. Do it your damn self, right? And they're like. Or we just said, simply said, no, I'm sorry. That, that, that we're not comfortable with that. We're, we can't do that. And, oh, you know. Yeah, furious, furious. How dare you? How dare you? You're not a Christian. You know, I've had a lot of people tell me that. Yeah, you know, over the years, you know, you know what I mean? We've helped a lot of people and uh, we've helped some homeless people. And uh, when when it came time to say, hey, um, you know, did you go get a job? Yeah, you know, a couple of years ago, we had a, uh, we were helping somebody. We saw him pulling out shoes out of a church and we went to help him. And anyway, for whatever reason, we found out where they live and we drove over there and they were they were living out of a hotel and the guy was going to get a job and he needed shoes. So we, we bought him a pair of shoes and uh, he was really grateful and <clears throat> really humble. But then we, we went behind the hotel. There was full of beer cans and tons of beer cans and stuff. And we're like, oh, my God. <clears throat> you know, and I said, hey, dude, are you, are you drinking? He said, yeah. He said, what's your business? And I said, well, if you drink, you're probably not going to be able to keep that job. And, you know, we got the we got the riot act. You know, you're not Christian. You're you're not, <clears throat> you know, you're not a good person or you tell somebody who's on the street. Um, we had somebody who was living on the street under a bridge and she had a dog and she said she had a sister in town. And I said, well, why don't you move in with your sister? And uh, she said, uh, she said, well, I have this dog. And I said, well, you know, why don't you put the dog in a pond or give it to somebody who can take care of it? You know, how dare you? How dare you? You know, and then her boyfriend, who was sort of under the bridge, you know, we were telling him, he, she's like, well, he's got a record. And we we're like, well, you can drive truck. We, you know, Angela's worked in the jail and teaching life skills, teaching life skills. So, so she knew those jobs you could get for people who had records and, you know, people who had sex offended. They, they could be in trucks. They could drive trucks. And so we suggested you know, that they get a job driving trucks. And it was like, how dare you not understand us? How dare you? You didn't hear us. How dare you? Well, you know, this particular lady said that we said, well, do you have any relatives you could live with? Well, yes, but uh, she won't let me have my dogs. I'm like, well, then you need to get rid of your dogs. You just can't live out on the street like this. And, um, you know, but no way I'm not giving up my dogs. You know, I'd rather be out on the street. But truthfully, and demand our money too and yes. want, want more and more and more without doing anything to right the situation or make it better just give me give me give me and yeah uh, we wanted our way and and our way was to say hey here's a job you can get you don't have to be out here on the street angela even found up some hotels they could stay in i i think for almost nothing and they stayed in them but then we started hitting them with the hardcore like hardcore it's not hardcore to us but the hardcore was hey there's a job you could get over here hey there's some you know trucking jobs or hey you can do this to kind of get on your feet and they were like you know that they set the boundary with us you know sorry um, guys let's keep going dude. They, you know they set the boundary with with us and uh it was really really freaky and it was like wait a minute you know what's going on here and and that caused us to think what is love? You know, we gave some people one time we, we helped them get a hotel. They were freezing outside and they went in and we, we bought them some, I don't know, jackets or something. Yeah. They're really cold. Take, took, yeah, took care of the hotel bills. What we did, we didn't give them the money. We just paid for the hotel room. But the next day there was damage to the hotel room. They went in and partied. And they had all their back, friends. They took back the coats we got and they got the money and they bought liquor. And uh, that's how we met this other lady that we were trying to help. But boy, there was such a, you, you know, there was this Christian thing that that said you they, they were using that against us. They were using that unconditional love that we did not have unconditional love against us. 
because we wouldn't do it their way. So they wanted our money and they wanted to do it their way. You know what I mean? And we're like, well, right. we'll assist you, but we're going to suggest you maybe do it another way. And so this is where unconditional love gets confusing. Love, Unconditional love gets very confusing. And people will, and this is why we're doing this video, because we have had that used against us. You know, it's, we've had that people try to manipulate that with us saying, well, if you're a Christian, you would do it like this. And if you were a Christian, you wouldn't even get upset. If you were a Christian, you wouldn't tell me to leave. You know, if you were a Christian, you wouldn't, you know, and, and we realize we start thinking, wait a minute, this love thing that the spirituality talks about, you know, we're just supposed to just love everybody, you know, your home's a commune and everybody can come in and we all cook together and we all, you know, hang out together and we all drink together. And, you know, that's, I'm just using one example. There's, there's multiple examples of this toxicity. And, and that's what we're talking about today. We're not talking about just pretty much normal relationships. We're talking about toxic relationships. We're talking about relationships that are not healthy. You know, mm -hmm. Boy, did you want to say something? Well, you know, how I wanted to start this whole thing off today was I wanted to talk about the definition of what is unconditional love. OK, because that that's important that we know that. So let me just read you what uh, I've got on. And do you have that definition of the Bible that says what is love is? Oh, uh, Yeah. You know what? I have it in here and I didn't cue, okay. cue it okay. up, but, but I could probably take it up. So unconditional love is known as affection without any limitation, any limitations or love without conditions. This term is sometimes associated with other terms such as true altru altruism. Another one is, it's a selfless act of offering love without expecting anything in return. Uh, learn, uh, so anyway, so that was from Healthline, the first one doesn't say, oh, for Wikipedia, that was the first one. And then this one, it says that, um, that the, the unconditional love is when you love someone no matter what they do and have no expectation expectation of repayment okay and then here's another one and it's from uh very well mind the other one i just read was psychocentral.com this one's um very well mind unconditional love is showing love for another person without considering how it will benefit you or what you will get in return so this is interesting because it's like you, you do and you don't want any strings attached that's that's another one of them that i read oh here's another one so this is from author Elizabeth, um, Ern, Ern, let me make sure I get it right, Earnshaw, L-M-F-T. Um, so anyway, a really amazing lady, great article. We're going to talk about it today. Unconditional love is a weighty term for something that most of us don't really understand. It's my work as a marriage therapist that I found it's often used to express a type of love that exists beyond bounds. And beyond this, it often creates a justification for staying in an unhealthy dynamic. So she's going to kind of get into where... Like Dan's saying that it becomes unhealthy and that, you know, yes, we, we don't want strings attached when we love someone. We, we love and we give it without expecting anything back in return. And um, we're not concerned with what we're going to get for doing the kindness or doing the love that, that we're doing with the person. When a parent loves its child, it's not going to say that because I loved you and I, I supported you and I took care of you and, and I'm your parent, you have to do what I say. You're going to become a doctor and not an artist, for example. That would be, I loved you with conditions, with strings attached. You're going to do what I say. You're going to live where I want you to live. You're going to have the job and carry on the family business. This is what you're going to do because um, it's conditional love with strings attached. And, and this is what we don't want to have. And so it, it can, so when you, let's say that your dad didn't want you to be the doctor, follow the, the family practice and, you know, do that. And you're like, dad, no, I, I'm an artist. Don't you get it? I'm not that. I'm not cut out for that. And they shun you. Um, they, they, they mistreat you. They abuse you. They cut you down. They make fun of you. They don't support you. And, and you're wanting to go to whatever classes you want to become an artist. It's, it's very conditional and it becomes abusive and um, it's not validating who you are, what you are, and it becomes extremely unhealthy. So what are we supposed to do? It's like so many people, as you know, they just give in to this and they just do what they're told because they want to be loved. Who doesn't want to be loved? And so many, uh, many of us have not been loved properly 
in our childhood years, which they say causes a lot of self-esteem issues and, and problems that, you know, follow you the rest of your life, but you can overcome it. And that's kind of what we're here to do, to do today is to say, look, just because we're told that love is obedience, which in a lot of religions, Dan was, grew up Jehovah's Witness, me world by church of God. I was in another sick religion after that. And all of it's very conditional. Everything's always been conditional. And if you don't do that, then you're not loving. And we just want you to go back to the person that you once were, and then we'll love you again. Be the doormat that you used to be. Don't stand up for yourself. And you stand up for yourself and you say no to us. That is not acceptable. And you will not be acceptable in this family. Matter of fact, you will be punished. And same yeah. with religion. You don't do what they say. You don't believe as they want you to believe exactly to the next, you know, to T. You will be shunned or put out. And it's it's everywhere, isn't it? It's everywhere. It's everywhere. You know, I was going to, could I share? Yeah, please. But I was thinking about, you know, we let some people live with us a while back, a good while back. And uh, we were just, you know, our hearts were wide open. You know, we heard these people needed a place and we were like, hey, man, we want to help, right? That's that unconditional love, you know? We didn't know these people. And we're like, yeah, you know, please, you know, stay at our home and man, I got the grill going and I started making some big dinners and ribs and doing all this service because, you know, that was the unconditional love, you know, and all of a sudden, you know, time start going by, you know, one month, two months. And then about the third month, we started noticing we were really helping them. We were helping them with a car. We were helping them with just so many things because we wanted to show that unconditional love. But there came a point where it was starting to be taken advantage of. Oh, already had been. It, it already had been. But we were like just overlooking, 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 like the Bible says, turn the other right. cheek, turn the other cheek. And so eventually it got to the point where we went out to our little house outside, our little glass house. And I went out there one evening and they were playing solitaire on their computer. And they just looked at me like gave me a look like you're you're bothering us. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, whoa. And I'm like, uh, you know, it, they're like, is it ready yet? Is the food ready? And right then I said, what am I doing? What's wrong with this unconditional love that's happening right now? So I asked him, I said, well, you know, guys, I uh, just want you to know, and this is very, very hard, right? Yeah. It's very hard to tell somebody it's time to go. And so I looked out at the people and I said, I told them, I said, hey, you know, why don't we wrap this up in a couple of weeks? You know, why don't we wrap it up? We got a little trip we're going to go on and you know, you, you guys can watch our cat. We'll pay us some money. And then when we come back, let's just we'll part ways. <clears throat> and uh, so we get back. And anyway, long story short, um, they were very, very upset. Very upset. Their stuff was by the door. They obviously didn't pack it yet. They they had hoped they were going to negotiate with us. And, 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 and that, live with us forever. Yeah, and people and, and, really think this. They 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 say that it's just temporary, and this is again and again what we've experienced. And when it's, they don't mean that, they don't. They they want to, I, they want to stay out of work as long as possible. A lot of the time, yeah. unfortunately, that's what we've experienced. So, do we just keep on letting it be that way and let them just not work, not participate, not pitch in, not provide, not? cook not clean not anything and just take 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 it and being taken advantage yeah of. there's something wrong with that there is something that's wrong not with that. unconditionally no. loving and it's not unconditionally loving yourself no so no. we got home um i said well okay thank you guys and here's some cash and thank you and she says well you know we weren't exactly thinking this is what how we want to do it and i said well you know this was our agreement and anyway she starts throwing this stuff in the car really really angry you know and I said, well, I'll help her, you know. So I went out to help her and she told me to tell me off, told me to get aft and, you know, I'll, I'll she do didn't it. didn't want any help. Yeah, I'll do it myself. And I went, what is wrong? This unconditional love thing. Me and Angela have had to look at it over and over again. What is love? And I and I think you got to say, what is loving you? I, I don't think we asked that enough. What is loving me? What is loving Dan? You know, it, it's easy to be loving, right, and, and express lovingness, but it isn't that I'm looking for it because I needed nothing from these people. I needed, I didn't need anything. I didn't need any money. I didn't need any this. But there was a point where I had to be what would appear to be unloving. But the unlovingness 
was actually what was needed. I, I don't even know that I'd call it unlovingness. I needed to set some boundaries. I needed to put, I, I needed to be able to say, no, this has to stop. Like with your child, right? You you love your child unconditionally, no matter what it does, right? You could never, like Angela said, you could never stop not loving your kid. But there comes a time where the kid's so out of line, so out of line, love will go, no, right. do not do that. Right. And he'll cry and make a big noise and True. you hurt me, you know, oh my God, it's the end of the world. <laughs> but it was the end of that attitude. Right. And so right. people need that. Older people need that. They need a spanking. They need a, you know, don't do that to me. Stop it. Lots of grown up kids. That's what I mean. Right? Yeah. Adult children. Mm -hmm. And that's what we don't realize. You think everybody's adult, but you've got this parent that's being manipulative, covert. You know, like my family, the, the elders told my mom, you can take his money, but don't have any conversation with him other than that. He can support you. Meaning, you know, the church is not going to support you. Use your family. You know, they can give you money. OK, we, we've they can give you money. We don't want to give you our money. We don't want to give you the church money. This is the Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah, yeah the Jehovah's Witnesses. But you can take his money. You can take his. Yeah, so they tell Dan, you know, we can take your money, son, but we can't talk to you. But they, the elder said you can give us money. Imagine this, guys. And, you know, here's another thing is that this lady I just mentioned, the therapist, amazing woman, great article. We'll talk about some of it. But she kind of makes it clear that you have this re reasonable aspects of a relationship that consider that what, what it makes up. So one of them is respect. One of them is kindness. And none of the one is, is that you feel safe, safety. She calls it safety. And so it's like, okay, so just analyzing that in, in any given situation that you're in, do you experience this from the other person? And if not, just know this right now, it's not healthy. So do you feel respected? So in that situation, we mentioned those different people who are homeless. Dan didn't really give all the ins and outs. He's missing a whole yeah. bunch of aspects oh, yeah. of it. But you kind of get the idea. It wasn't quite as simple as Dan was saying. It was much more complicated. But knowing that we were not being respected. And now we didn't have a handle on this back then. We just knew that this was toxic. Something about it was we're being taken advantage of here. And they have no intention of helping themselves. This is an endless yeah. cycle of giving them what they want without it's enabling any, even. Right. It, it is. So there's there was no respect. Um there was no kindness on their part. There they were actually uh we were entitled. they were entitled. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah, they were entitled. They wanted us to forever give because there was nothing that on their part that they were going to change at all. Nothing was going to be changing on their end just us being the cash cow, that's it. So now we don't feel safe. Um, they're, they're, we come over, they're drinking, they've been drinking, they're, they're uh, uh, abusive, they're loud, they're hanging out with creepy people. You know, it's like, okay, so now we don't feel, we don't feel safe. We don't feel safe in the relationship. We don't feel that they have our best, our bench, best interest at heart too. Like that one day I'm going to make good use of this kindness of yours and I'm going to move on or you're really, you're going to help me. And so I feel like, I'm doing a good thing. I'm safe in my giving. I'm safe in my supporting. And, um, it, you know, it, it became unhealthy to beat the band. And, and of course, in the end, when we started asking questions, we're hated, shunned, rejected, cussed at. So, yeah, we weren't safe. And it wasn't kind. We were being kind. They were not being any kind of kind back, nor appreciative, just in, in entitled. And we were not respected because they intended to do nothing to make things better, which was our intent in unconditionally loving them. It, it, it's reasonable for us to expect, and this is what the therapist said, to expect respect, to expect that we're, that they're kind, that the kind, the kindness goes both ways and that we feel safe. And if we don't, what we have to do is say, you know what? I gave you that without any strings attached. I did those things without any strings attached. And I love to do it. And I did it from the, the from my heart. And not expecting that, that uh, anything back in return. However, at this point, I have to uh, say no to this situation. And um, I'm going to set some boundaries. And I'm going to, you know, not be codependent on you because I want you to love me. And then that's another thing. It becomes codependent, which means that now you're doing it because you don't want them to not like you anymore. You don't want to be cussed at. You don't want to, um, you know, have to endure the saying no 
And so you just keep on going and you keep on going like a woman who's being abused constantly and she won't say no. And she's codependent. She's fearful of what will happen if she says, I won't be treated this way anymore. And But she's not being respected. She, she's not being given kindness. She's not uh, safe. But we have to tough it up. And this is not the way that we are raised in our religions or in our homes. We are told to just shut up and put up with it. Put up with all of it. And if you do that, you're, you're good. You're loving, you're kind. You're not rocking the family boat, which is part of the codependent idea Melody Beatty talks about in her book, uh, Codependent No More, is that you know, you're know you going to rock the family boat if you begin to make changes, if you begin to say no, and the family will be mad, 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 fuming mad, and it will punish you and shun you. But I say, and I've said this before, it is worth it. Because you are worth it. You don't have to put up with being treated this way where you're not respected. You should expect that, this reasonable expectation. So this therapist is saying that you've got to stand up and say no and set boundaries. Now, what happens if you set boundaries? What is a boundary? Let's just talk about that for a minute. Um, yeah. Dan, and, 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 and I, yeah. <clears throat> now, I want to share because I've, I've been on the side. I want you guys to know I've been on the side where I've been the reckless guy. I've been the guy who's needed the help of other people. And I remember a lady that was going to help me. And, but boy, she set boundaries right away. And, and I think this is important. I want to tell you that right now. If you feel like there's somebody toxic in your life, toxic, you want to help them. You know, you want to give them a hand up. You are going to have to set boundaries right away, especially if it comes to your house. Like say somebody, yeah, yeah, know. you know, wants to live with you, right? Yeah, especially You're, you're going to have to say, you're going to have to look at your wife and say, how much humanly possible do you think we could deal with this and ex expect him to get moving and get on their feet, right? And so you might say two weeks, you might say a week, but when you, when you do, you almost have to put it in writing. You almost have to say, it is going to be this. Now, the lady that I was working with one time, my, my uh, mentor, I went over there one day and I had a drink. I had a drink before I went. I got off work and I was used to having a beer and I had a beer or two beers and I went over there and when I come over there, she, there she's got this stone face, <laughs> hardcore. And she said, don't you ever come over to my house after you drank. And I went, you B, you know? I said, no, you're a B, you're a Did party you actually super. say it? No, no it. she was that mean, you know? <laughs> yeah, you, you, you know, and I thought, man, this is horrible. What a nasty person. She's filled with it. This is being on the other end, right? Because he's thinking I'm not drunk. I've only had yeah. a beer or two. Yeah, and, and I'm feeling good. And, you know, hey, you know, but I was reckless, right? So I'm over there, you know, let me finish this and then go in. And she's like, don't ever, don't ever do that again. Don't ever come over to my house with alcohol in your breath or you've been drinking. If you come to my house, you're going to come here and it's like respecting their house. Yes. But being on this side, I thought, you're rude, you're nasty, you're curt, you're hardcore. Why are you like this? Why can't you be? <clears throat> but I have learned. <laughs> now that now we've that been on this so other side. On this it. side. No, 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 no drinking mm -hmm. in our house. No, 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 no. Out in two weeks or whatever. Yeah. You set these parameters and you have to. And that is very loving. I think it's loving to let someone know ahead of time, look, in our house, um, we don't want you drinking. Um, that's off. That's, you, you know, I've been in alcohol myself. I know what it does. It it it, it slows everything down, right? Right. And so... Or whatever other parameters that you have. Yeah, no whatever smoking. other parameters. You look no, down, no, no smoking, no whatever. Right. And, and you set them up front as an expectation. And I think you have a very sober time and you say, here's what we expect. You may even have them written out. You could have people sign them. But if you do this ahead of time, then you're going to be less apt for somebody to be super furious, angry. They can see up front, this is a person who can speak their mind. This is a person who can set boundaries. This is a person that's going to hold my feet to the fire. They're not just going to let me come in here and not just push stay. Over. Not a pushover. And, and we're not enablers. And we're not enablers. And that is loving us. Right. Self-love. Yes, self-love. I think as Respecting Christians self. and spiritual people, we think we have to hold this other expectation. And usually it's the expectation of the other person that we're trying to live up to, not righteousness or rightness. 
rightness is helping a person get on their feet, get a job and move on or whatever, right? Or giving them a meal or giving them a few dollars or whatever. Encouragement, whatever else you yes. can give. And, and, and that's it. But I think there's this high ideal that that's to go on forever. That's, you know, the, the, the victim says you, you should do that forever. Um, and they're always accusing you and manipulating you if you don't. If, if you don't give them all that they want, all the time, all the time they need, all the time they need at your place, you know, it's uh, they, they accuse you. They use the scripture that you're not loving and we need you to know that that is not loving you. Right. And, and here's the thing, guys. We'll say that that person has really worked a lot of years even to get you into this certain mold that they have of expecting out of you what they want out of you. And then you kind of wake up and you realize this mold is not made for me. I, I am not going to be this person that takes it in the shorts all the time. And I'm used and, and abused and taken advantage of and um, gaslighted and all of these things. And you say, uh-uh, I'm not doing that anymore. So then you threaten their little kingdom. They they literally have set up no, a what? kingdom of how they want things. And then you come in and you are, have a wrecking ball by saying no, just by simply saying no. I, and don't talk to me that way. And no, I will not. And whatever it is, because you know that you're being abused and you've come to realize I'm being abused. I'm being gaslighted and I'm not going to put up with this anymore. And so you start putting up some parameters, boundaries, saying no, all of this. And they are so mad because it really their kingdom has been threatened. Their little plan, how they're going to you know, make you fit into their life has been broken and they are mad. So, you know, and I want to say this, it's like, it's their, their ego self that's mad. I, I don't believe it's their essential self that's mad. It's their ego self. And however you want to put that, okay? You put it in your own language. Um, it's not okay. And we don't have to forever take it in the shorts and forever be that doormat or whatever it is that they've created us to be in, in their life. We can say no, and we must, or we won't be whole. And and our life will not become will not become the people that we're meant to be. I mean, there's so many people, Dan and I have seen lately, including in our own lives, we've had to begin to say that the process of saying is no and standing up for ourselves. Um, if we're ever to attain to what we know we're on this earth to do, but so many people are not willing to say no to the people that are abusing them and using them and taking advantage of them and not respecting them and not being kind to them and not, and they don't feel safe, but they just keep going and going and going. And now they're 65 and they're still doing it. still allowing it still. Now they're crippled meaning emotionally, mentally, spiritually, they're they're defeated. They haven't become who they're meant to be because they wouldn't get their voice. And God is asking us, I feel, to get our voice, to stand up for once and for all for you and respect you and say, I won't do this anymore. And um, yeah. it, it must be, you know, there's an example. I, I gave it last time, I think, uh, John, Brad, John Bradshaw, is that yeah, his name? Yeah. So. Yeah, his mother, um, they had, he, he called it a toxic relationship, an unnaturally bonded, probably because he didn't have a dad. I think that's how it was. So he kind of became, I don't know, the, the, it was a wrong kind of situation. But he he was doing things that his mother just couldn't take it anymore. So finally she said, you know what, I'm not helping you anymore. And um, you're you're on your own. You're on, it killed her to do it. And he was so mad at her, so mad. But he said it was the best thing that ever happened to him. It was the best thing she could have ever, ever done. And he wrote books. He became an incredible speaker. But until she said no more, he wasn't going to change. He was oh, going to keep yeah. on taking all of her money to dig him, dig him out of this hole and out of that hole and this situation and that situation and all of her money going out the, the door just to get nowhere and just get, gets worse and worse. And she finally said no more, no more. And it about killed her to do it, but it was changed that Father everything. Leo or someone else? No, it was uh, uh, John uh, yeah. Bradshaw. Yeah, I want to mention Father Leo. Okay, because that's another good one. And you think I have him confused? You think uh, Father Leo? No, no, no. It was it was both. But Father Leo had a story where he was an alcoholic, and it was a very similar situation where the mother was, you, you know, just catering to him and mm -hmm. rescuing him, and and then one day he ran into a tree. He just got mm -hmm. drunk and ran into a tree. And his mother didn't run to him this time. She's like, I've, I've let go. I've let go. I'm, I'm not helping him. 
And that is wisdom. That is unconditional love. Believe it or not, that is love is letting go, right? The prodigal son let the son go and do his own thing. So this mother decided this time I'm not going to run to him. You know, he literally run into a tree and almost killed himself. And she says, I release him. I, I give him to you, Lord. Like, like I'm not going to save Maybe the world. Maybe that's the story that I'm thinking it, of. It could be. And then he wrote the book, The Wisdom of Letting Go. Mm. That's what he wrote, The Wisdom of Letting Go. Mm. And, and he wrote about, and he said this. He said, the day I got well, think about this, was the day my mother let me that's go. That's the story. Okay, yeah. so I'm sorry. Father Leo, that's okay. Father, uh, Father Leo. Father Leo. What's his first name, Dan? I don't know. Okay. They Father just called Leo. him Father Leo. He went around and spoke at all the churches. But he, he was talking about unhealthy codependent relationships where you think you got to save everybody. And I think that's what Christianity and you know and in and, and the new age movement is about. We got to save the world. We got to go out there and help everybody get Christ consciousness as, as if I can do it. But part of it's our responsibility. Yeah, help part of helping someone find God is letting them go and letting them hit the bottom. You know, they talk about that crash and, you know, let him crash, get out of the way. The The prodigal son never chased his son down the road. The prodigal son gave him his necessities, sent him down the road, didn't hate him, uh, wished him well. Um, and then when the boy returned, the father accepted him back. But life needed to do to that son what life needed to do. And uh, and the the prodigal son father you know knew that that that's what life is. It's a melting pot. It's a it's, it's the heat is. that that burns the bullshit out of us. You know what I mean? So exactly. so you allow people to go out into their bullshit, into their their worlds. I can do whatever I want. I can drink whatever I want. I can do whatever I want. And you say, yeah, you sure can. You we all have free will. Go do what you want. And so you just get out of the way. And that's what this mother finally did. After years of catering and, oh, baby, oh, let's fix your car. Oh, honey, let's go do this. Oh, let's get you a meal. Let's do this. And she was, <clears throat> she didn't realize that she was actually doing something worse, you know, enabling. Uh, the lovingness she had was actually hurting a person. And, and that's kind of what we wanted to talk about today, that lovingness, too much lovingness, unbalanced lovingness can actually hurt a person. If you have somebody drinking themselves to death and you keep giving them money because you think that's love, that they need a drink and they're crying and you say, well, by God, let me give you some money and go down, you can go buy another six pack or 12 pack or, or a fifth of a bourbon or something, right? You think that's loving, but it, that is not loving. Actually loving in this particular case, in that particular case with an alcoholic, is saying no. Lovingness is saying no. Unconditional love is saying no. And so we've got to get into this. We've got to be able to look at it from this point of view. We've really got to be able to say, what is love in this particular situation? Do I keep fixing his car? Do I keep doing this? Do I keep giving him money if he's not working? Is that loving? Exactly. Or is this other loving? Go or ahead. Do I so. keep on allowing myself to be abused and uh, put down and cut down and, uh, all, you know, doing everything for that person and there's nothing. Not, not that we do it again. We're not doing it because we want something back in return. No. That's not why we, that's not the healthy love. But but there are certain expectations. And I did find that scripture. It's on First Corinthians 13. I'm going to read to you what it says about love. In verse four of first Corinthians 13, love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It's not arrogant, not rude. It, it does not insist on its own way. Mm, that's an interesting one. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. And it never ends. And um, anyway, but I know absolutely that I've learned. See, that's that's the Christian scripture that we had to go by. See, it's long suffering. It hardly notices when others do it wrong. That's another version of one of those lines in there. Hardly notices when others do it wrong. Um, it's not boastful. It's not proud. Um, it's not selfish. It's kind. It's gentle. See, so that's where Christianity has taken it down the wrong road because it, it didn't like set any kind of boundary. So here's where we're going to go with this. 
Jesus didn't just, he was not a humble, meek. people get mad when I say this. Jesus was not a humble, meek, mild only guy. He was both that and he was patient and kind and forgiving and all of that. But he's also bold and strong and said, no, you know, this is what you're doing to these people. You're accusing and you're full of sin yourself and you're ready to throw the stone at her when you have the same things you've done in your life. Okay, the first person who's, you know, got no sin, you throw the first stone then. And, you know, he just called it like it was. He said, you, you know, you hypocrites, you're, you know, blah, blah, blah. It, the Bible even says you load people up with burdens and you don't enter in yourselves, you you priests, and you don't you don't permit those who are trying to enter into the kingdom to, to enter in because you're 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 in the way. And you're, you're taking advantage of the people. The Bible talks about it. And Jesus said, you whitewash graves to the priests. And, you know, um, you liars and your father is, is the devil. And I mean, he said so many things that we, we don't think of him as setting boundaries, saying, stop treating the people, God's people this way. He, he made a whip twice and went into the temple and whipped the temple uh, money changers and all the uh, birds and whatnot let out of all the cages and said this my father's house is not this it's not a place where you sell stuff and try to get things from people it's a place where you come and find god and it's a house of prayer that's what he was saying there and you're making it a den of thieves and, and he, he didn't mince words he, he he spoke to what needed to be sp spoken to when people were being taken advantage of like in that situation been going on for years in fact it was so bad that you would spend a whole year making your um, sacrifice that was a yearly thing. It was made to, it had to be no blemish, no flaws, nothing wrong with it. And you get it all the way to the temple once a year and you offer it your special gift. And then they would say, it's not good enough. And they take it and command you to go over there and buy a good one. That's how bad it got. It was really, really sick and evil. And the way that they dealt with what they did get to was sick and evil. And the people were just beside themselves with, this can't be God. That's how it was back then. This can't be God. And the priests were acting like crazy. So, you know, love is not taking it in the shorts. Jesus didn't act like that. He didn't, he didn't act like that at all. That's not the example that he gave. So, you know, we're not expected to just like this, this little example here makes it sound like we just have to take it in the shorts, but that's not the example of Jesus. And um, so we and you know how to tell if you're, you, if you've been violated, if you're in a relationship and, and things aren't right. Uh, what we've noticed me and Angela and a lady told me one time that, that when you start whining, whining is, as they said, anger coming out of small hole like the balloon, when you blow up a balloon real big and then you go, mm -hmm. and, and so that's what anger is. So usually you'll have anger if you don't set a boundary, like, like say somebody's taking advantage of you and you don't speak up, you might just start complaining to each other, you know, you know, that ain't right. I don't think that's right. What he's doing. I don't think this is right. And you know, that ain't right. You know, anger can matter. Small yeah. And, and you just whine. That is an indication, mm -hmm. an indication that somebody has crossed your boundary okay. that you did not set. And, and this is a skill set that you have to have. And that's why we're talking about, you know, what is unconditional love? Because unless you know and you have this skill set, you will be abused. Oh, yeah. You will be conned. You will be used. You will be manipulated. Gaslighted. Um, gaslighted. You'll have the Bible used against you. Mm. But so you, you've got to see these things. You've got to see that Jesus stood up to, you know, the Pharisees and he knew they were using the Bible to abuse, to, you know, have power over the people. And so that the people could be manipulated and corralled into churches. And so he stood in their faces and he said, you whitewashed graves, you hypocrites, you offspring of vipers, you dead man's bones outside look clean, but inside are filthy. And so he spoke to it and we have to speak to it. If we're going to be healthy, and we're going to have a good life. We want to have a good life, a, a peaceful life. Amen. We want to have inner peace. We want to have the joy of giving. We, we still love to give, me and Angela. And, and it's wonderful to give. Actually, giving is a privilege to be able to give, to have enough to give. That's a privilege. But I got to say, if you don't have the ability 
to set a boundary. If you don't have the ability on the other side of it to, to say no, if you don't have the ability to set a boundary, you should probably not get into a situation with other people where you're co-mingling at such a close place. They're in your house or using your showers or, you know, if you don't have the ability to say no, you know, or this has got to stop, or if you hadn't had the ability right up front to say this is going to happen for two weeks and no more, uh, like the lady said, don't come into my house and drink. Don't do that. And I will call you. Boundary. I will call you. Don't call me. Mm -hmm. And setting boundaries right up front. Or was it the other way around? You call me. I'm not going to call you. Yeah, yeah she wasn't going to call me. So she's like, yeah. if you want to meet with me, work with me, you call me. We'll set up an appointment. And then you can come over. Even her books. If I was to get a book. She had a lot of books. She would sign it out to me. She would literally sign it out. It was like a library. She would give me the book. And then a few days later, she'd go, that book is to be returned. And, you know, and I was May like, whoa. 16th, and, right? and, and all this I thought was like, huh, you know, how dare her? Jeez, that's so, that's so crude. <laughs> this is but she knows human She nature. knew how to take care of herself. Mm -hmm. She was even going one time. Remember that to that 12 step? Yes. Oh, yes. That's a great example. But she was going to a 12 step one day. And, she, and apparently she was driving by this lady's house. And this lady, she gave her a ride. She had I think, been giving her rides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and she decided, no, I, I don't like this. I don't like to have to stop. I don't like to have to wait. I don't like to have to. She was always making her late to the meeting. Yeah. She was not ready on time. It just became a, a big fat pain in the butt. Yeah. And so <laughs> she's she, taking advantage. She was in the meeting and she said, you know, she told the lady, you know, I'm not going to be picking you up. I'm, I'm just going to go to the meeting myself. And, and she did. And she did. Well, the lady in the meeting made a huge announcement to the meeting. And the lady says, I don't have means. And, you know, Marsha, you, have to pick me you know, um, said she wasn't going to pick me up. And, and she's actually under obligation, under God, you know, to pick me up and to give me a ride. And so she thought she was going to manipulate her. Manipulate her. And yes. apparently the, the one holding the class you know, kind of went like, is that true? Is that what you're doing? And the lady said, yes, yes, I am not picking her up. I'm going to drive myself. And that is it. And I went, wow. And the lady looked at me, the my mentor, and says, and you have to be that too, Dan. If you want to be happy, if you want to be whole, if you want to be complete, You've got to know what love is and what what happens, like what happened with this lady was she realized that stopping off, waiting, honking the horn, making you know, me late to the meeting. Yeah, was not loving herself. No, it was disrespecting her too. Yeah. And so it wasn't kind. No. And and to have somebody demand it was a whole nother thing. Entitlement. To say you owe me, you you have the the means, means and, and, I and I don't. And so she said that she had to say in front of a whole group, in front of 20 people, she had to say, yep, that she's exactly right. I am not picking her up ever again. And I will be at the meeting, but uh, she will have to find her own way. And the lady looked at the teacher and the teacher looked back <laughs> at the lady and they go, well, you know, it's almost like the wow. gavel, right? Well, the, you know, yeah. the judge said, and it was over. And she was telling me that she was saying like, that's how powerful, Dan, you've got to be. You've got to be able to do that or or be very careful. Be very careful. Yeah, and, you know. and here's what's really painful is, is that you tend to want to be codependent in that situation, meaning, oh, my gosh, if I say that, what I really need what I, to respect me and to feel safe and to uh, feel that, that, you know, I'm that this is right, is if I say no, they're going to hate me. They're going to reject me. They're going to think I'm a B and this is not going to be acceptable. I can't handle that. And so then they don't say it. They don't say, no, I'm not picking you up anymore. You you're always late. You make me wait. It's a big to do to get you in the car. Then I get to the meeting and I'm late every single time. And I've asked you to stop doing that. Please come on time and on and on. You don't respect my wishes. You don't honor my boundaries. And so I'm not picking you up anymore, but now you have to deal with everyone's harshness that you're, that you're, not kind that you're not kind even though that was not kind was being done to her and she and and she's not respecting the lady no the lady wasn't respecting her and so now she's got to endure everyone thinking that she's a bee 
Yeah. But see, that's the codependency you've got to overcome too. You don't have to say, I don't care what you all think. This is wrong and I'm not going to do it anymore or I'm going to be doing it out of resentment and I'm going to be being taken advantage of, which is not respecting myself because I'm allowing it. I'm enabling this lady to be dishonoring to me and make me late all the time and never pitch in gas and on and on and on. So no, I'm not doing it anymore. And then they just have to deal with it. And you know what? Here's the beautiful part. They will eventually forget about it. They might underline and think, boy, she's tough. But you know what? They also might start to think, wow, she's brave. Wow. She knows how to take care of herself. Wow. I could see, kind of see where she wouldn't like this lady. Yeah. Um, and they would, eventually they would get it. But you have to be strong in your own right to say, I won't tolerate this anymore. I have more self-respect for myself than that. Yeah. And I want to say we're living right now. You, you, you need to learn these skills. Absolutely. Because we're living in an entitlement world. Oh, it's true. And I was, I was watching these things in California that's going on. And what's happening in California is a lot of people are wanting to move out because of the high taxes and because of all this going on down there and weird stuff that's going on. Oh. And there's all kinds of stuff. You know, if you leave California, they want you to pay some of that uh, money that you made in your home back to California. They're trying to put all kinds of laws so people are getting out of there as fast as they can. And so what's happening is these people, you know, like say you move out of your house, they've got people that drive through the neighborhoods and look and they're going, oh, there's a for sale sign. They literally break into your house, these, these squatters, they break into your house, they change the locks, they get in there, they change the locks and they move in. And I mean, when I say move in, I'm not talking about moving in with a tent. They move in with three, a whole house full of furniture bedroom sets, kitchen, you know. Or just even take over what furniture you might have in there should it, it be furnished and they get their mail sent there. Right. But I saw I saw this thing on TV where they had to take care of this. These people are like, how do I get them out of my house? Well, you got a victim now. And like, what does that mean? Well, it's like 90 days or something like that, you know, oh. or pay them $30,000 to get them out of your house. That's what their options. So, so there was a. If that could work. There was a, a new business down there now. And the business is you hire a guy as a person who's a tenant. So there's this new business. You say, hey, I want to rent this to you, Dan. And I'm the guy who's going to get them out of there. So once you rent to me, I go to the house and say, hey, I have the papers. This thing's been rented to me. Get out. Now, it's so interesting. And this is the kind of world we're living in is the person that's in the house to me illegally broke in, changed the locks, took occupancy, is screaming to the top of their lungs, screaming, this is my house. And the guy goes, get out. This is my house. How dare you? Don't tell me to get out of my house. Can't you see I live here? And the guy goes, you broke into the house. Get out, get out, get out. And the guy says, well, I'm going to have to call the cops because I have a lease. And, uh, so he calls the cops and these people are literally being drugged away, screaming. They showed this one house. There were three, four bedrooms full of furniture in the driveway, beds, couches they so had in there that they-, they moved in like, like it was their house and they felt entitled. And so when they went to court, they said, well, what do we got to do to get them out? Well, they have 90 days or you can just pay them 30,000. It's like, that was wrong. So they said there must be another way. But the, the point I'm making is, if you do not have this attitude, if you do not have this loving self, if you don't have the ability to set boundaries, you're going to be in trouble because this is becoming the way. Entitlement is becoming the way. People are becoming victims. Well, I couldn't afford my house, so I'm just going to move into yours and you're going to deal with it. And you've got to have these tools. If you're mm-hmm. going to have peace, if you're going to have yeah, peace and homeostasis and not whine all the time and, and let resentful. people walk all over you and be in resentment. You'll never create like that. No. You'll never do anything great in life because you'll always be distracted by these people. And so you must learn these tools, you know? Yeah, definitely. Not easy, guys. Not easy. But if you can do it, and it's beautiful when you do. It's to- it's hard at first, but once you get these tools in you, that, that capability of doing that, and you start practicing... You know, this, hey, don't do that. No, I'm setting a boundary here. I don't want that. Once you get that voice, 
man, life becomes easy. And it, I'm telling you, if you don't have that voice, you're going to be in hell. Yeah. And I think it's really important. I feel like everywhere Dan and I look right now, including in our own lives, we're all being asked to get our voice. And, and this throat area is um, considered to be your, it's a certain chakra. I think it's the third chakra. Yeah. That's right. Problem, yeah. And it's, it's your voice. And if you don't have ability to use your voice, your life will not be very good. It, it, you just have to yep, develop yep. it. So I feel like right now God is asking everyone to use their voice in myriads of situations. And, and you either do or you don't, but we're being asked to do it. And I feel like everywhere I look, it's like this. And I'm having to, on every turn, learn how to use my voice and get it. With family. Yeah, with everyone, everyone. actually, everyone. Oh, you can't believe it, how many uh, situations we've had to get our voice. And you don't always win every battle. We had one recently that we got our voice, we used our voice, but the guy absolutely oh, lied and no. lied and lied. I'm not going to say who or what or anything, but lied, 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 lied. And we ended up just saying, um, okay, all right, well, um, and we just had to let it be. And we had to just realize that we lost that that battle in a weird kind of way. However, I was proud of us for getting our voice, speaking what needed to be spoken to this person that had, you know, most people are afraid of these, these kind of amazing people. But we spoke to it and the line went on and we just had to say, OK, it's kind of reminds me of um, one time uh, somebody that's famous on the TV realized that this woman was not going to come clean. It's just, oh, got it, got it. You know, <laughs> she's not going to come clean. She can't come clean. She's too attached to her ego self and, and her image, and she will not ever come clean. Got it. Okay. And then she dropped it. You can't win all the battles, um, but you do the very best you can, and you feel proud of yourself for trying. Right, Dan? Yeah, that's right. So, And, and like I said, life will go smooth without it or life maybe not perfectly like in that situation you know it wasn't perfect no but but you know we felt good none about of them what are we perfect did, whenever, whenever you got to set a boundary or it's never perfect yeah. it never feels good just get used to that yes and people do screw you over yeah and, and they manage to get away with it sometimes yeah and, and it and it don't feel good no, and it doesn't it, it never know. feels good even if you have to say you know you got two weeks or yeah you know yeah, um passing. You know, it's never going to feel good. It's never no. going to feel good. We were, you know, we're on a trip recently and it just never felt good. It was like the work never stopped and it was, it was just free work. You know what I mean? But it just. Uh, Not all of it was, but there was yeah. plenty of it. That was yeah. Free. And, and we had to say we're, we're going to walk away because we were tired. We were beat up and then we came back home, you know. And so anyway, we just want to tell you that, you know, getting your voice is is very powerful. Getting your voice is a beautiful thing and getting your voice will save you a lot of grief and getting your voice is unconditional love getting your voice is unconditional love you need that voice you need the voice and so self-respect too and it's unconditionally loving yourself and that's, that's right. also uh, uh, we must we must unconditionally love ourselves as well so yes. odd i know it sounds odd but um no we have to do it Okay. All right. So thank you. For that's listening. it today, guys. We just wanted to share that with you and, and hopefully, hopefully that helps in your future. And uh, just keep in mind that we're living in that kind of world right now where, you know, if you want peace, you want harmony, you want inner peace. If you're able to do these few things, really, it's just a few things, but it takes voice. It takes a little courage. It takes a little practice too. Take some practice. No, no, it ain't going to be perfect. But if you commit to it and say, you know, this is what I'm going to do because I deserve it, because my wife deserves it, because we deserve it, and we have the right balance, then we're going to have a great life. And that's what, why we wanted to share this. We wanted you to, you to have a great life, to have a good life. And this is part of life. You cannot avoid this. This is part of life. And, and you need these tools. We need them. Yes, we do. So, yes, we do. So anyway, that's it. I don't know if you have any more to say, Angela. You think we covered it all? Yes, I do. Except for just one really remaining thing. Let's just say that this talk has spurred you on to say, you know what? I It's time that for my sake of my children, for my self-respect, for the respect of uh, my job as a good parent, and the fact that I do not feel that I'm being treated right, I'm not being treated with respect and kindness, and I'm being abused and I don't feel safe and my children are not safe. And let's just say that you've decided I've got to draw a line in the sand and I've got to say no, and I've got to do what I've got to do. 
So my question would be, now you're thinking to yourself, now what? And as Dan talked about in a course that he did ca called finding your finding my own path to God, finding your own path to God, um, that you'll be able to we'll, we'll make sure you're soon you're going to be able to utilize that course and use it. But you, you can't just jump right in always and just make this decision and make your big announcement and um, say this without a plan. You've got to have a plan in place. You've got to start planning your exit. And planning what you're going to do. Start praying about it. Start asking for guidance. And then start making some phone calls. And so one of the things you'll want to do is type in your internet browser box. Um, if you don't have a use of a computer, get a, get somebody, go to the library and ask the lady at the, the desk to show you where and how to search on the internet to get some things printed out. Take some money because they charge you for the printouts on these things. But type in resources and then the name of your city where you want to live, okay? And then up will pop different kinds of things, food banks, um, um, places for women to go, to live, to be safe, to start over again. And um, the rescue missions are always really, really helpful. There's there's every kind of rescue mission, Union Rescue Mission, Boise Rescue Mission, Boston Res Rescue Mission, Denver Rescue Mission. They're in all the major cities almost, there's really great rescue missions. They are the best. They really, really do an incredible job. I feel like they're really blessed. And I've been working with these guys in Denver first when I lived there for years and now in Boise for years. And I love these people. And the Union Rescue Mission, they're all good. That's California. Um, they're all so wonderful. So know that there's help out there. There's plenty of it, especially if you're a woman. There's a lot of help, but there's also help for men and housing, transi transitional housing. There's all kinds of things that they can help you with. Um, to get you back on your, to get you on your feet, to get you safe. And there's safe houses for women. So you just have to go and do a little research on resources. Use that word on your internet browser and begin to formulate your plan on how you're going to get out of there and how to get safe. And you just can't up and say, I'm going to say it because you can get yourself killed and be out on the street real for real. But if you do find yourself on the street, then you need to find those places that, that help. Any food bank will probably, if you go to some food bank, you find out about a food bank, you go there and ask where can you find women resources and they can probably you know tell you, but you can get all this stuff on the internet. So I just wanted you to know that you will have to plan your exit sometime. Maybe a lot of the time you have to plan yep. what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. Maybe you're being abused at work and you want to quit and now that you've heard this, but you realize you can't just go quit and say what you need to say. You're going to have to plan what you're going to do before you say that. So anyway, I just want to give it precautions because, you know, we, we have to use wisdom and you want to stay safe. You don't want to get more unsafe by just blurting out this stuff. And then uh, one last thing, too, is just to know that when you first get your voice, when you haven't used it, Dan taught me this when I first met him. It comes out kind of harsh in the beginning with a lot of maybe even you know, really harsh words coming out because you've been holding it and bottling it for so long. So it can become very, maybe even dangerous because you're so angry because you've been bottling it up for so long. So um, be prepared for that. Maybe visualize the whole situation when you say it, how it's going to go down, what you're going to say, how you're going to feel. And so to help maybe take that bomb, that explosion out of you a little bit to help. And if you do explode, and just Dan said to me this, Angela, be kind to yourself. Know that you've been holding this in for a long, long time. And now you're expressing and it's going to come out not so pretty because you're not used to using your voice. And the more you use your voice and the more often you use it, try to do it more on a daily basis as opposed to holding stuff in all the time for, for years and months and try to do it daily as things come up. But know that in the beginning, it will be a little bit uh, rough. Yeah. And don't don't beat yourself up for that. Just know that based on that you've been bottling this stuff up, not knowing any other way to do it, because this is how you were taught, then it's going to come out kind of ugly. And you're going to feel like, oh, my gosh, I'm not a Christian. A Christian would never act like this. And you feel shame and guilt for having stood up for yourself. And you even feel like you lied when you didn't. You were abused, this kind of thing. So just know that it might be a little weird. And a little strange, and you might feel like a real non-Christian because you've spoken for yourself for the first time, maybe. Um, but it, it will get easier. You will be more softer. 
in your way of presenting it in, in future years and future, you know, down the road, it'll get easier and better and more mature and more wise and more kind and more gentle and, you know, all of it. It will just get better and better and better, but it takes time. So anyway, I wanted to express that because you might make some big changes and you need to maybe be aware that there's some obstacles, there's some planning um, that you need to do probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So don't beat yourself up, you know, yeah. it's what we all have to do, you know, like, like they say, we've all been down that road. So we're just sharing these tools, but hopefully this helped you. Hopefully this will help you keep a, a happiness in your life and joy because or it'll begin to be happier once you've been implemented yes. this stuff. Not at first. Sometimes at first it is hell to pay. Yeah, but it's hell if you don't do it. Right. It's more hell if you don't have these tools. I agree. And so like Angela said, it's a little painful once we first institute these things, but then it, it gets smoother. Eventually it, it does smooth out and it becomes a, a beautiful ride and it gets easier and it, it's it's cool. It's really yeah, cool. Just just pray for wisdom. Pray yes. and ask for guidance and then sit and think about what guidance is coming into my brain to implement and then write it down and then start implementing the thoughts that are given to you. Those thoughts are coming from the guidance that you just asked for. And believe me, you're heard. You just have to sit with the question and then what thoughts come in your mind, write it down and start putting that in order. And doing those things. And it, it will go really much more smoothly if you just follow the guidance. Not perfect because you're having to do some tough stuff. But it will go much more smoothly. So yep. that's it. All right. That's okay. it. Thanks All for right. listening. Thank you, guys. We do and, love uh, you. And we wish you the very, very best as you learn to implement this stuff. Yes, I on this journey. Yeah. It's, it's a good journey. It really yes. is. And we just got to pull away from that. Sometimes that church ideal, you know, that says, you know, just, you know, do whatever and uh, use the healthier route, like what we're sharing with you. Right. So anyway, that's it, guys. We hope you have a great weekend and uh, we look forward to seeing you next week on the Spiritual Discoveries. That's right. All right. Over now. Over now. <laughs> bye bye.